I'm going to try and keep us, uh, get us out of here as quick as possible because I know you guys want to get to read us. So. All right. All right. I have a question for you. Um, if you, uh, I can sit. It's fine. I know you usually have your little podium stuff up. Yeah, I, I didn't see it, so that's fine. I don't know. I'm, I'm good. I don't mind sitting. Um, if you had a hundred million dollars, what would you do with it? A hundred million. That's that's big money. A hundred million dollars. What would you do with it? Would you give it away? Would you go buy you a boat, a car, a mansion? What would you do? <laughs> You'd put it in the bank. And then they'll probably do. I would give like four million away to my parents, and then one million away to the church, and then the rest of the money I would either put in the bank or save, and then one million I would keep myself. Mm -hmm. Go to whatever college, give a lot of money to the church. A lot of money to the church. Live well. Mm -hmm. Marcus. Give it to my school so we can have a new building. Oh, amen. Give it to your we school can go so they can have it. We can get like all this technology. <laughs> <laughs> we can build a playground. <laughs> Josiah? I would rub it in the playground. You would what? <laughs> <laughs> no. What did you say? I'm going to rub it in their face. You're going to rub it in their face? <laughs> Wow. And you being serious too. <laughs> you wouldn't what, what would you do with it? Oh. Hundred million dollars. Well, I give ten percent, maybe ten million dollars to BBC. I invest my other couple I invest money into a four wheeling paintball aerosol whole setup. <laughs> Just for the heck of it, and I buy a house. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. Just the rest of the way. Wow. I like to tell you how your third thing is the house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I had a coworker that told me she stayed up late one night thinking if she won sixty-five million, I don't know why that number, but what would she do with it? And she literally stayed up all night thinking about it. Mm. And what she came up with was. She would create a community for her family and some of her close friends, but not a gated community because she doesn't want to be in charge of the trash pickup. <laughs> like, really, you stayed up all night? <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. Not a gated community. Wow. Not a gated, because they have trash. <laughs> do you think what you would do with the money reveals uh, where your, what your heart is really about? Or where your heart is really at. That's what the Bible says. Where your treasures are. How, how do you think God would feel about it? Yes, uh, well, if you like, if you like, spent it on really dumb things or drunk people's business. Don't don't pick on your side. Now. <laughs> or, or if you were like, but if you gave it all to the church. Yeah, I mean, I would say it definitely, but I mean, if you added on, like, if you had $100 million and you were to die the next day or in a week or something like that, would it change or something like that? Mm -hmm. Or would, because I mean, that's when you find out if it's like, I mean, money's money, nothing lasts, but if it really is honoring to God, then it would last after your lifetime. Mm -hmm. And you're right. Money is definitely money. Now, truthfully, even myself, I I probably would uh, get something for myself. Probably something technological, like a couple computers, or, or a couple mics, and a studio I could do recordings in. Um, but is that what God desires? And in Matthew um, six. If you turn to Matthew chapter 6, real quickly, and we're going to look at verses 19 through 21. Matthew chapter 6.
here Jesus is speaking in the Sermon on the Mount, and he says, um, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasure, treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in or steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. He then continues on in verse 24. He says, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other. He will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. So, the question becomes, what can we do to honor God with our money or with our wealth? What, what can we do? So what we're going to see today is from the Old Testament, two essential elements to help us honor God with our money. So two elements to help us honor God with our money. The first one being that we practice giving. And the second one being that we restrain our greed. And we'll see within the restraining of the greed, um, we'll see two other uh, things as well that we can do. So practice giving. Uh, turn our uh, Deuteronomy chapter 14. Deuteronomy chapter 14. I've still got a mental picture of Josiah taking his money and shoving it in somebody's face. That's <laughs> um, can somebody read verse 22? Please. Be sure to set aside a tenth of all that your fields produce each year. <clears throat> okay. So this is the practice in giving. This is how we can honor God with, with our, our wealth. You, you, in the Old Testament, what they did, they, uh, he had the um, Israel, they would, uh, would share their land. And so God... Um, gave it to them and provided for them uh, the land that he gave. And what he wanted them to do was to give a tenth of it back that he had provided. He asked that they give a tenth of it back. He just required a tenth of all that the land produced, which he gave. So um, what this was to do um, and what this meant was that um, he wanted to produce a joy in their giving. He wanted them to realize, look, I've, I've provided for you. God has provided for me. I can give freely back to God. And, and this pleased God. It pleased God when you give back to him. And so this is why he set up, set up the tithe so that they could get into the practice uh, of giving. And it, and it pleased God. God enjoys when we give to him, and it produces joy. In 2 Corinthians 9, 7, it says, Each, each one must do as he has proposed, purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And so as you practice that giving, you do it joyfully, and it, and it takes your mind off of, well, using the money for the wrong way. Because you're using it to honor God. It's like an act of, of worship um, towards God. It says, God, you're number one. You, you provided this money for me. You provided this land. And, and I'm going to tithe it back to you. I'm going to give it back. Because you provided it for me. It's a form of worship. Good question, yes. So, um, for the whole, like million dollars or a hundred million dollars if you're donating money i mean if you have a hundred million dollars giving off one or ten million to the church isn't going to hurt you at all it's i got the room sorry but i got helena here she's 16 she wants to join you guys this is my daughter Faith. Helena, this is crazy. 
we all have to get the rest of the stuff there. This is me in charge here. That's all that's all line up. Okay. So like, to give away like one or ten million dollars, it doesn't even crush you. Would it, would it have like be better to give? I mean, yeah, it's a ton of money, but would it be more powerful if someone was only ten or five million dollars gave a million dollars? I don't know which way the Lord be more pleased with. I think the Lord, from what this teaching here, is the fact that you you put the Lord first. With okay. your with your giving, so it's not it's not really the the amount. This way, it's like your heart is set on I want to give to the Lord, you know, and it doesn't matter. I just want to give to the Lord. You're cheerful about it because that's what pleases God. And just like He had with their land, He had provided them land, and He He commanded them to give a tithe. But it was to produce that, 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 that joy so they'd be pleased. Like, yeah, I'll give a tithe. Yeah, you provided it. Um, in Deuteronomy 16, uh, verses 16 through 17, um, it says this. Three times in a year, all your males shall appear before the Lord your God in the place he chooses, at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, at the Feast of Weeks, and at the Feast of Booths. They shall not appear before the Lord empty-handed. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord your God, which he has given you. So um, the people of God attended these uh, three festivals, which were um, to be marked by this tithe, the, marked by this joyful giving. And that was the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is the Passover, the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Tabernacles. So um, they were to realize God gives everything that you have and you should joyfully give it back to him because he's been providing for you. So you give, give, give. Give of your time, give of your money, give your, your life to Jesus and give your all to him. Give even when it hurts. Give, give, give. Acts 20. Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, Acts twenty thirty five. It is more blessed to give than to receive. That's what Jesus had told Paul. Um, in Mark twelve verse forty three through forty four, Jesus uh, exemplified the widow's uh, giving, saying that it was more sacrificial because she gave all that she had. And um, she would have to wait until next week in order for her to uh, get another wage because she gave, a, was it two mites? And um, that was like a, a, day's, a day's wage or a weekly wage. So she'd have to wait the next week in order to buy her food. But she felt that she should give it all to God. See, that, that wasn't much. But she gave it all. She put the Lord first and that pleased God. So you want to question, you know, how is your giving? Do you give from your heart? Um, and the key is honor God in your heart. And the way you do that is you practice giving. And the reminder comes from Matthew 6, 21, where it says, Where your treasure is, so your heart will be also. The second way to honor God with our wealth is to restrain greed. And there are two things within this. Um, it's you give up your time and you are canceling, uh, or in, in this particular, in the Old Testament, it was the canceling of debts. And the reason that he allowed this is um, God was testing the hearts of his people. So the giving of our time. Turn to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20.
says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath day, is a Sabbath of the Lord your God. And in it you shall not do any work. You or your son or your daughter, you shall your male and, or your female servant or cattle or your sojourner who stays with you. So basically this is... Um, this is, was a giving of the time. The Sabbath was set aside so that they could give of their time. It was a holy day unto the Lord. It was a day of worship and for the family. It was a day to renew the body, the soul, and the spirit. Now that word uh, remember, um, it means um, recalling or remembering in the form of actions. And this, this means that... Uh, they took their time to obey what God had commanded. And he said, remember the Sabbath. Um, they had the time to observe this holy day. Now God required uh, them to observe this time not only one day um, out of seven, but every seventh year uh, their land was to, be, to also lay uncultivated. And you see this in Leviticus 25 verses 1 through 5, and then 20, verse 22. It says uh, that in the sixth year, God would provide them a promise of a big harvest because they weren't to cultivate the land. It was, it was set aside as for them to take time to be with the Lord and to worship God you know, for, for that. And so they had enough food to survive off that, that year when that seventh year came. So God provides for us when we give of our time. And uh, the Sabbath law restrained uh, greed. You see, time spent worshiping God and holding on uh, and holding the land without plowing keeps one from trying to work extra hard to feel his greed. So, if, you know, even now we, we spend time worshiping on, on the resurrection uh, day or the, the first day of the, the week. It was just Sunday. That's to, to, that helps and keeps us from being greedy. Also, because we go out and try to get that money. I got to get that dollar. So I can make that money, get that new car. But if you put, put that time towards the Lord, it keeps and restrains that. So devote your time to God and honor Him with your wealth. Now the next one was the canceling of debts. In the Old Testament, this was another way of restraining greed. The canceling of debts was a test of the heart on both sides, one for the uh, one who borrowed and one for the one who lended. Um, now today in Romans 13, from Romans 13, 8, it's clear believers in Jesus are obligated to pay their debts. We honor God when we pay our loans and uh, and when we borrow money from someone, we should pay them back. Um, and see here, um, for Israel, God set up a system for grace to abound, but encouraged debts to be canceled. So if you look, turn to Leviticus 15, Leviticus 15, verse 2. We see this, this canceling of debt. And I was reading this, I thought, well, this is this this is really a test of the heart. In Leviticus 15, verse 2. Can someone read that? Leviticus 15. Did I? Oh, I wrote that wrong. I'm sorry. Okay. Deuteronomy 15, verse 2. I had Leviticus on my notes. <laughs> Glad y'all were reading, checking up on that, because I had Leviticus 15 on my notes. Yeah, yeah. Deuteronomy 15, verse 2. It should read like this. This is what I have on my notes. This is the manner of remission. Every creditor shall release what he has loaned to his neighbor. He shall not exact it of his neighbor, 
and his brother because the Lord's remission has been proclaimed. So, let me let me put it to you in regular terms. Saquon, I give Saquon five thousand dollars, right? Saquon needs the money. I loan him five thousand dollars. He said, "Hey, I'm 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 gonna pay you back, bro, in seven years." But at the seventh year, if Saquon has only paid me four thousand dollars, I cancel the debt. Says Saquon, you don't owe me no money anymore. The debt is over. That's going to test your heart. One, it, it may test Saquon's heart because Saquon will be like, well, I might not pay him back because that seventh, because of what, ha what can happen too, I forgot to mention that, if, if it was the sixth year and I, he had just asked me for that 5000 I I had to cancel the debt at that seventh year. So if 5000 Saquon could look and say, well, that seven years coming around the corner, so uh, I ain't really, I'll just pay him $500 and I'll keep the rest of the money because I can use it for something else because he's got to cancel the debt. Whereas the test on my part would be, well, should I really give that money to him knowing he may know that that debt, that canceling the debt is coming? That's a test of the heart. So then was it, would it be a good thing to loan him that money? to the seventh year? Would it be a good thing? Yeah, it would just seem like it would make more sense to just wait until the end of the seventh year. And then loan the money after the end of the seventh year? Yeah. Mm. Okay, let me look. Suppose he needed it, yes. Yes, oh, good. I'm glad you said that. I mean, yeah, so if he needed it two years prior, and then you're like, here, I'll give it to you now, you know, you know, it's... Well, here, here, here's, here's, here's the thing, okay? God commanded that they do that. Now, Matthew 22, verse 37 through 39 talks about that. You know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your strength. And the second is the first, love your neighbor as yourself. So you love God first, and then that love transcends to those around you. Okay, God, I love you. I'm going to obey what you said do. You said cancel the debt. Even if I know that that seventh year is coming, you said cancel the debt. I give him the money. I'm loving God. I cancel the debt. I'm loving my neighbor. Now, if you look down further down in Deuteronomy 15, verse 9 through 11. Did I write that down? Yes. Listen to what it says. Beware that there is no base thought in your heart saying, The seventh year, the year of remission, is near, and your eye is hostile toward your poor brother, and you give him nothing. Then he may cry to the Lord against you, and it will be a sin in you. You shall generously give to him, and your heart shall not be grieved when you give to him, because for this thing... The Lord your God will bless you in all your work and in all your undertakings. For the poor will never cease to be in the land. Therefore I command you, saying, You shall freely open your hand to your brother, to your needy and poor in your land. Say it with me, ouch. <laughs> So this this causes the question really us to really question is our heart sold out to God? <clears throat> Are we willing to help a brother in need if we want to honor God? with our wealth. Um, uh, in Luke 14, verses uh, 13 through 14, there Jesus is, is, is talking about, you know, lending to those, like inviting those who to a party who can't repay you back. It, 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 is, is your heart sold out to that? Or are you thinking, if I loan him this $5,000, is he going to pay me back? God, God sees the heart. 
And when we honor him, we have to honor him from the heart. So we want to examine ourselves in grace. What are we chasing after? So if you had a bad experience, would it be wrong to not trust anyone else just as policy? Yes and no. Yes and no, yes. Okay. The, qu the question is, you know, where is your heart? You, you, you want to be wise. Yeah, because, I mean, it's just a lot of money. Yeah. But you don't, you just want to make sure your heart is right. Yeah. And make sure your heart's in the right place. All right. Well, let's look at Christ for a minute. Christ honored the Father with his wealth. He gave. He gave his time. He even gave his money, because it was his money, and he gave his word to us. Philippians 2, 6 through 8 says, Who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant and being made into the likeness of men. But being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, and by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. God gave. Jesus gave. He did not have to give his life. He didn't. He did not have to come down from heaven. And come in the incarnation and, and live a sinless life. He didn't have to do that. But he gave. He restrained greed. In Luke 4, verses 3 to 11, where the, there's the temptation from the devil, and also in Matthew 4 as well, he didn't give in to the devil's temptation. Well, if you be the Son of God, turn these stones here into bread. Come on, you the Son of God, man, you hungry. Feed yourself. Be a little greedy. No, he said, it is written. He restrained the greed. And he came to cancel our debts. He came to cancel our debts as well. Jesus in Luke 4 said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recover of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. He restrained his greed and he canceled our debts. Jesus did that. And it's only through Christ that any of us will be able to do that. Because you know when it, when it comes to money, and money is not evil, it's the love of money. And the only way to root that out is through Christ. The only way. Because he did those things perfectly. He did those things perfectly. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we... Know that it is only by your grace that we are even able to wake up and able to live and do the things that you cause us to do. Lord, um, we just ask that you would uh, help us to honor you with our wealth and with our, our money, Lord. Lord, Open, open our hearts and our, our eyes to see where our hearts are really at when it comes to, to wealth and to money. Help us not to be greedy, Lord, but to truly give glory to you and glory to the kingdom of God. We thank you for your word and we thank you for the time that you give us. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Any questions? Or? Okay. Okay. Oh. Sorry about that. Sorry. <laughs>
Thank you. 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 Thank you.